the next question to come back into was um, <laughs> I heard it could have been a different story um, and it's quite funny as an Italian to like have a bit of a choking wrestling match with some pasta on one of your tours. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? How the hell did you hear about that story? <laughs> Just a quick one, guys, before we get into the main chunk of the video. But if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning a signed Alessia shirt from this year's Euros, look out for the three prompts that will come up on screen throughout the video. You must complete all three things to enter. Let's crack on with the episode. Welcome back to the Petri Pod. This is uh, the biggest episode by far. <laughs> um, I probably don't need much introduction, but I'm joined today with Man United and England's Euro winning <laughs> Alessia Russo. How are we? Yeah, good, thanks. Busy day, but um, nice to to be reunited yeah I was, I was trying <laughs> to figure years. out on the way up like how long has it actually been like five six years maybe yeah probably maybe even longer it's crazy from yeah. being like at school together playing yeah. football together to like years. nothing yeah it's been mental but yeah. um you've you've gone on to do a lot more in football than me which, <laughs> which we'll you're get doing this though <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> levels to it but um yeah obviously we've got to cover it first but how's how's everything been with the euros and like yeah everything it was like so obviously it was my first like major tournament so I kind of went into it thinking I'm just going to enjoy every moment of it soak it in like learn from the older players and stuff like that and then kind of as the tournament went on and we started to do even better and better yeah. I think you just kind of have to like live in the moment and be in the moment and yeah everyone was was on board with winning it from day one that's I think, handy yeah helps. <laughs> everyone wants to win it yeah. <laughs> I think it was like n we never said it but um there was just like a belief from like the training camps, just the prep, everything had been going really well. And then, yeah, yeah we just kind of knew in the squad without having to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and then off, off the back of it, like obviously you, you were a big name in football before, but you've like propelled into <laughs> like superstardom. What's it been like the last like couple of months? And what's for you been like the biggest thing where you've been like, God, this is, this is cool? Yeah, I think it's been really weird. Like again didn't expect it and when we were on camp it was like you we were in such our own little bubble yeah that we didn't know what was really going on on the outside like obviously we at the games and stuff you'd see all the fans there and you'd think like it's big but when we came out we were like a bit shocked and like sorry there's a <laughs> cat hair in my face <laughs> um yeah we were just like wow it's really taken off and i think lots of different things the they put my boots in the Tower of London. I've got that written down. <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Surely yeah. that's the biggest one. Yeah, that was, again, so unexpected. Didn't didn't even know like the magnitude of it all. But, um, yeah, that was probably the coolest thing yeah, after. Yeah, for sure. But um, speaking of like reactions to stuff after games, this isn't really in the flow of the order, but it just popped yeah. into my head. When you like yeah, you play, and you play for England, especially like, on such a big stage, and you either play well or you have a bit of a stinker yeah are you like on twitter after and in like the comments does, does that get to you at all or like yeah it definitely can get to you i think it's hard because i mean in a sense women's football actually gets a lot of praise maybe compared to the men's um which is a good thing but you always get them one or two fans who are upset about something you've done yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever but um I actually was on social media in the tournament, but a lot, like a few people did come off of it. Oh really? Um, yeah, like you could choose if you like. People yeah, would just yeah. not go on it. Um, but yeah, I stayed on it, and maybe if I was in another tournament, I probably wouldn't, just because like there's so much going on, and you just want to stay in the moment of football, which luckily I was able to do. But you're you're away for a long time, so yeah, it was hard, but you say you don't read them, but you do read them. Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. gonna see it comes up on your feed, but. Um, yeah, I try not to read them, but the odd one or two you do. Yeah, yeah. I, even I've had a few stinkers, and I've got like <laughs> barely the amount of yeah, followers of you. But you got. always read them, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. Yeah. You get in your own head. Yeah. Um, it's not nice, but I just find some of them well funny. Yeah. And like, the funny ones, I'm like, that's actually quality, yeah, yeah. The ones that are a bit like personal, I'm a bit like, oh. yeah, a bit hard. <laughs> yeah. Not not necessarily that uh, cool for. Yeah. Um, so that's the Euros, and we will speak about that more, like obviously throughout the episode. But, yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to. A, get the record straight on, but yeah. B, also go all the way back to where you started at West Farley Football Club. I know, Club. back in the day. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a few media outlets that have got it a bit wrong, and know, Steve's yeah. not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy. That was, back, that was like, God, we must have been about six. Four? Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, when did you start playing? I, I reckon about four or five, mm. and then 
But West Farley was the first team, like me, yeah, you, yeah. Aaron, all of them. Crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, the, the obvious question is, how did you get into football and, like, why? I think, um, obviously, I have two older brothers who played and dad coached and played and <coughs> it was just, like, a, a thing in our house. That yeah. You just got into it at a young age and then, obviously, got in with you, like, at West Farley and then carried on playing got in with school. us as if like <laughs> <laughs> made the squad <laughs> yeah. um, and then yeah it just kind of took off from there but I'd always loved sport and then football just like stuck mm. and you yeah. must have played at school throughout the whole time yeah what was it like because when we were growing up especially there were there were barely, barely any girls to yeah so what was it like and what do you think you learned from like just did you join a... When was the first time... You, I'm jumping about a bit here, but when yeah. was the first time you joined a girls' team? And, like, the bit before that, what was it like just playing with boys all the time? Or did you not really, like, notice? Or was it, was it a thing? I mean, I quite liked playing with boys. Like, we had a good team, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we had a <laughs> yeah. Um, But, yeah, I liked playing with boys. And then I played for Bearstead and then with the girls and the boys. So I'd play for the boys on the Saturday and the girls on the Sunday. Right, okay. So that was, like, my first introduction to girls' football. Yeah, and yeah. then it went from there to academies. Yeah, and which um, was Charlton. Yeah, Charlton. And what was it like? Because that was the first, like, I suppose, big step where you're like, yeah. okay, this is this could be something here. What was that yeah. like? Yeah, it was good. I loved my days at Charlton. And when I was there, the women's team were actually really good. They were in the top league and stuff. And mm -hmm. so it was nice for me to be able to see that side of it a little bit. Because before that, probably not seen a whole lot of women's football because it was never on TV, yeah, yeah. never shown. So, yeah, it was nice to be in that club and then... That's when I was at the academy. I think we trained maybe twice a week, which for an academy is like nothing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was when I started to realise that I probably wanted to do it like more and Go more. For it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you had Cholton. You must have been playing for soccer elite at the time. Yeah. And school. Any like were you playing for like Maidstone and Kent at that time as well? Or? I think I was playing for Kent schools, but it wasn't very regular. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. Just a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> My favourite nights were Friday nights. Friday nights, that is so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, they were so good. So good. The and standard the was schools. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. standard was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it was like me, you and Aaron, like, rotating whose house we went yeah, to Yeah, for week. tea. Yeah, for tea. And it's classic, just playing football until football starts. And yeah. And just, oh, man. <laughs> Brilliant. Did you do much of the soccer schools? Or were At you like, relief. yeah, or yeah. were you more? Because no, I, I remember when we were proper young, you did. Yeah, I did, and but then, then you probably started after taking a bit more serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the soccer schools. Um, I did a few of them, definitely. I remember down at was it Maple Snow? Yeah, Maple yeah. Snow. Doing them there. I I can't remember how old I was when I stopped, but um, yeah, I did did do yeah. a few. Was that a club thing that you had <clears> to stop for? Is it like like because when you're at Charlton and then obviously you went yeah. to Chelsea. I know a, a lot of the boys that I knew growing up that signed and stuff. Yeah. They'd get pulled out of school games because they didn't want the players to get injured. Yeah. Was it that or was it just like you just didn't have the time to... I think... I'm not sure it was that, but I think it was maybe that we didn't have the time. Yeah. Maybe I had training and games and stuff, but, um, yeah, I can see why they didn't want us to play school football because I, I don't know if you remember, we had a girls game at Stocky and I broke my wrist in one of the Did games. You? Yeah. <laughs> It was reckless. I don't know. I can't even remember how it happened, but um, yeah, standard wasn't wasn't all that. But it's getting bigger in schools, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I um, <coughs> I don't know if you remember this, but when I was writing questions and stuff, I remember we played against um, MGS away. Yeah. And we had Mr. Holiday that took the team. We obviously all got the coach down, or we might even walk down, or, or he probably made us run down. <laughs> probably as a warm up. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we were like horrendous, absolutely terrible. And at half time, um, Mr. Holiday sits us down. He's like, "Right, I'm gonna start counting your passes." <laughs> and uh, every like we were like, "Nah, that's like, so embarrassing." <laughs> and then he was fully like counting every single pass because we weren't keeping the ball very well. That's gonna fall off. Um, but then I remember one other bit of advice he, he said, and it, at the time it annoyed me, but he was right. <laughs> it was give the ball to Lessie. <laughs> and I, was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did, but I thought, when I remembered that, I was like, I've got to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would have been so embarrassed for him saying that at the time. Nah, it was, he, I mean, he was right. I think we were like 1-0 down, and then you probably scored like three goals <laughs> and then went on to win. But no, I just had to bring that up. Like, it, it, it I really don't good. remember that. Yeah, it was a classic. So then, um, it was a classic. When you're at, you, so you've signed for Chelsea now. Yeah. Um, and you're playing for Kent in this point. Do you get called up for England whilst you're at Chelsea? Um, I think my first call up to England was maybe when I was 13 
and it was in the under 15s. Um, nice. So I would have been at Chelsea at the time. But yeah, I think yeah. before that, I played for English schools. Yes. We yeah, actually yeah. had a game at Maidstone on the Astro Oh, McGallagher. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, I think it would have been when I was 13 um, yeah. for, a, for a camp. And then, because this is every footballer's dream when they're growing up to like play for their country. Yeah. When you're 13 and you get a call that England under 15s want you, what was that feeling like? Yeah, I was buzzing. I think my youth England experience was amazing. Like I made some of my best friends. We travelled to some <clears throat> like crazy countries at like such a young age as well. Yeah. But I remember school used to hate it because I had to ask for like ten days off. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that part wasn't so fun, but um, yeah, it was great. It was like the start of things like getting a little bit more serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what was the setup like at thirteen playing with fifteen year olds? Was it just everyone just pitched in together, or was there a bit of like? Because I know in some clubs you have like an older group that kind of a bit yeah. clicky and a younger group, but was it all just? In England, it's normally like you go with two age groups. So we'd, for the under 15s, it'd be like 99 and 98 borns. Uh, okay. So you're in the same academy level anyway because it was like 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s. So you were used to kind of playing with those groups of girls. And when I was at Chelsea, there was quite a few of us that got called up. It was kind of like Chelsea, Arsenal were like a lot of the squad because they were at the time probably two of the better academies. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, you just... When you're all together, everyone mixed really well, which yeah, was yeah. nice. Um, and yeah, you're you're together for two weeks every other month, so you start to like build friendships and things like that, which was cool. Because there's a, is there not like a group chat that still exists? Where yeah. We're in it? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Good Peeps. <laughs> there's like 12 of us in it, and we all started playing for England maybe when we were like 12, 13, 14, and then we went through the age groups together. That's so nice that yeah, you have like that, that group of you. Yeah. Um, so then you're playing for Chelsea, and then. This is the first time you go pro, right? Is that Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, it was like, it wasn't pro, but it was like, you're in a full-time academy. Yeah. Um, and then, still, you're only training like three times a week and then a game every weekend. But it was when things started to kind of kick forward a little bit, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it was great. We trained at Cobham, so it was nice. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Made a change from like the school fields and that, but... Um, yeah, that was when things started to really progress. Yeah, yeah, the facilities down there are a joke. Yeah, it's so nice. Um, and then this is the point where, like, you... Because I, I was looking at your, like, um, appearances for Chelsea. Yeah. And I don't think... Did you get one? Any? One. Yeah, you got and we one. lost. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then you moved to Brighton, which were the league below at the time. Yeah. What was the thought process behind that? Was it just, like, a minutes thing or...? Yeah, exactly that. I, I knew at this point that I was going to go to America. So right. I wasn't going to sign at Chelsea and I, I didn't even talk about a contract. don't even know if they were going to offer me or what. I just knew that I'd always wanted to go out there. So that was my plan. And I thought before that, like, I want to get experience playing with, like, in first team football yeah, yeah. and it wasn't the case at Chelsea because the standard was through the roof so I dropped down a league and went to Brighton and played there for six months before I went out there yeah. it was great I loved yeah, it because yeah, yeah. this is what I was going to ask about you next was obviously the, <coughs> for me what it looks like anyway the biggest step yeah. is obviously going over to America Yeah. Um, but you obviously knew you wanted to do that even before going to Brighton and stuff but like what was the what was the thought process behind that was, was it just like English unis weren't attractive or um I think, well, I knew in sixth form that I didn't want to go to an English... Well, I hadn't studied enough through school to go to an English <laughs> yeah. university because I've missed so much of school. Right. Um, so I took the SAT and <clears throat> got a, like a tutor for it and did well in it. So it got me into UNC, which in America is like a, an amazing school. Um, and obviously I got offered a scholarship as well. So it kind of was like an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Yeah. And then I went out there on a visit um, a few months before I like was going to start and just fell in love with it the campus is amazing the whole like lifestyle of college of a college athlete is just like it was so good I couldn't yeah. couldn't say no so then got it all agreed and and went out the following summer how much prep for something like that do you have to do for like flying out there yeah seeing what it's like day to day because I was looking at it yeah and then it got to the point where I was just like oh it's it is a lot of effort yeah. isn't it <laughs> time and hassle I think it luckily worked out quite well because I played in a tournament in December where there was a lot of college scouts. Right. Um, and then they kind of made the process a lot easier. And my older brother, Luca, had done the same thing. Yeah, so he yeah, knew yeah. what to do, like sorting the visa, sorting 
everything out there was it it's hard work but once it's all done you're you're sorted for like three three or four years yeah um but yeah when when i got out there it was everything was sorted for you yeah so it was nice it made made my life a bit easier how did you pick the ncu though so oh, is, it, is that the right way of saying unc it? unc so my bad <laughs> <laughs> same thing <laughs> the I was talking to three schools. One was um, North Carolina, one was Virginia, and one was Florida State. But I They're just all bidding for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> the Florida State actually beat us in the final of my oh, sophomore they? year in the national championship, which was a bit of a is what it is. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> not salty about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it now. Um, but the what was the question? Why did you pick there? Oh, sorry. The I coach. Think that was the yeah, it was. <laughs> The coach is like he's been there for so many years, and he's like renowned to have made like loads of players. He, right. Tobin Heath went there, Crystal Dunn, like loads of top US players. And I thought if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me as a, a young English kid. So um, yeah, I went out there. I went with Lotta, um, a girl I played with over here. She was at Arsenal, and uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Had the best time. Speaking of a few of the athletes there as well, obviously um, Michael Jordan went there. Yeah. Didn't you? So what was it like being in an environment that, I suppose, like breeds winners, basically? Yeah. Did, did, did it feel like that? Yeah, and in all the sports, um, every year the teams were competing for like national championships, which is like the highest right. award you can win. And <coughs> that's actually why I wear 23 now for United. It's I was going to ask. Yeah, it's because yeah, yeah, Michael yeah, yeah. Jordan. Nice. Um, but yeah, he, it's like a culture out there where you're at UNC. It's almost like being at kind of like Manchester United you're expected to win in in the competitions mm. that you're in and mm. you have you recruit a lot of players because it's a big school and they've got a history of doing well so it's just like standard out there flying out there and being you know was it 10 hour flight maybe or something like yeah. that yeah away from family i suppose for like the first time really in your life yeah um how, how did you settle in all right or was it a bit like shaky first because it's yeah. prob probably a side of Russo people don't yeah, see yeah, it's it being a bit shaky <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was really shaky really? to begin with yeah I was really homesick um even when I was younger and I used to go on England camps I used to like get really worked up before I'd go away because really? I, I just loved being at home yeah yeah um but yeah I it was tough the first few weeks thought what am I doing why have I just moved to the other side of the country <laughs> yeah. think questioning it all but um the girls were like great made friends like really quickly so that helped and it's just americans just want to help you like everyone wants to go out of their way to look after you so um that helped and then yeah as soon as the football started coming as well you settled in and yeah, i loved yeah. it ever since makes you feel at home just like yeah it does something that you've getting involved in it yeah american culture is very different to here it's very different what were some things that you loved about it and I'll move on to hate it after because there must be a few. <laughs> I loved well how friendly everyone was. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially where I was, it was like southern culture, so everyone welcomes you in, like mm -hmm. invites you over for dinner, like it was a nice environment to be in. Um, I loved the weather; it yes. was so hot. What What was it? Like thirties? Yeah, when I arrived in August, we got off the plane and it was like you know when you're on holiday <laughs> and it yeah, hits yeah, you. Yeah. That's what it was like. Um, yeah, it, sometimes it was a little bit too hot, but the weather was lovely. The campus was unreal. Um, yeah, the, the culture was really nice. I enjoyed that part. Did you like the food? No, I hate the food. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> hey, that, when you were going to ask me what I didn't like, I was going to say the food. Yeah. Especially in, in the South, it's like they have a lot of southern dishes, which is like fried chicken, like biscuits and gravy. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's horrible. 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 And the portion sizes are oh. huge. <laughs> It's huge. I put on a lot of weight my first <laughs> semester. <laughs> then I came back and thought I needed to sort myself out. Yeah. But um, yeah, the portion sizes were huge. I didn't love the food, but you found places that that you liked when you were there a bit longer. Was there any like what food caught you out, like guilty pleasures wise? Um, that made you pack on the pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I liked what did I like? I liked Chipotle. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. Um, I didn't like their breakfasts like like loads of maple syrup and bacon it's and too that. much isn't it nah, yeah. yeah it's too much too much but i've just um 
come back from Austin. So obviously oh, nice. in the south as well. Yeah. Lovely, like exactly what you're saying. Everyone's so friendly. Yeah. But you just like you want to come home and just have like a normal looking vegetable. Yeah, you and do. Just like eat y- one. Yeah, it's and horrible. everything is covered in cheese over there. Yeah, and it's the cheese yeah. is, is disgusting. <laughs> it's like orange cheese, <laughs> yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So it's come out of a can. Or, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hideous. Yeah, it's not nice. Food, yeah, food, not a good thing. America's no. got to fix up on that. Yeah, big time. they got to sort it out. <laughs> Um, what I want to do now is take you back to, I, I hope I've got the story right, is you're in a geology class mm. and your phone rings Yeah. and it's, I assume, from an England number Yeah. Um, and it's like, this is, this is the proper call up. Yeah. What was, what was that feeling like, like getting a call for the senior, the senior team? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it was a bit unexpected because I was in college and I was just like cracking on over there and when you're in America, you you kind of feel a little bit distant from obviously England camps uh, and the course, league yeah. and stuff so I was just enjoying my football out there again not really thinking that anyone in the England um, setup was maybe watching but mm. luckily they were and uh, yeah he rang me and um, it was just like I'm gonna call you up to this England squad and I was actually going as a training player so it was oh, the right. camp was in England uh, sorry it was in America so he was just going to fly. Touch, yeah, yeah, I know, I didn't have to travel. <laughs> yeah. So he was going to fly me down as a training player to like experience it with the squad, which obviously I was just buzzing about. Yeah. But then later that day, he actually phoned me and said someone's injured and pulled out. So I'd be going as an actual squad squad player. So obviously I could be, be in the squads for the games and potentially maybe play and things. So that was like even better. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I remember just like, I don't, I think I might have even left the class and just maybe not come back yeah, that day that's reasonable <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, caught up on the work another time yeah. <laughs> yeah but um yeah I went and rang my my coach at the time at, at college and he he knew about it before me he oh, was, did he? yeah because they rang him and then he was like I was I was waiting for this call but yeah it was it was nice it was kind of that's when you realize that like you w- want to go to the top and mm. when you get things like that it, it makes you want it even more mm. I was meant to ask you earlier you, you kind of spoke it about when you was at Charlton was like, you know, this could be something now. Yeah. When when was the point that you were like, this is actually, like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to fully go for it. Because I remember having the opposite conversation <laughs> with my dad <laughs> and being like, this ain't going to be It's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> but when was the point where you were like, either with yourself or with family or whatever, be like, right, let's let's proper go for this now. I know I've jumped about a bit there. No, you. I think, I don't know, because it's always been so hard for women because you've maybe had to have a job on the side. Yeah, so it's yeah. always been like a bit touch and go, which again is another reason I went to uni. I think maybe when I was getting that England call, I really? thought like, I want to throw it, like obviously I'd always wanted to throw everything into it and I had, but that was the point where I realized that maybe I could do this full time. Like, and in college as well, like I realized that the opportunities coming out of college, if you do well, you could go to the NWSL, which is the league out there or leagues over here and everything had really like gone up a notch since yeah. maybe the the, f- the past few euros and world cup so it wasn't like at like 12 13 i knew i'd love to play football yeah. for my life but when i was about 17 18 i thought like maybe that like i can do it full time and throw everything into it mm, mm. i mean is i'm going to come on to it later as well but you've always thrown yourself into it like i remember like the Snapchat stories you'd post at like, I don't know, 15, 16, just running or just going yeah. for a kickabout, but like every day. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this girl is just <laughs> on steroids or something, like what is going on? Yeah. It was just always there with you. but and, and that's why you've made it, I suppose. Yeah, I think I got a little bit of stick through school for that, like missing things. Because as well, we played like on a Sunday as, as girls and I'd miss like so much stuff. I well, mean, like luckily, socially. yeah, socially, I could go to a few stuff, but would never like drink or really like throw yourself into it as much as could even in college like you could enjoy it a little bit more but I just think as an athlete you can never really like you obviously get moments here and there but you just you just have to deal with it it's just part of of the sport you have to miss out on a lot and it it is what it is kind of do you are there things that you'd look back then and be like oh that party would have been good or that (laughs) or is or you just like now you're here it's fine (laughs) No, I don't. I mean, a few like family things that you miss, which is tough at the time, but you get to celebrate with them at different times, which sure. you just have to enjoy that. And yeah, it's just part of it. I don't like when I 
do get to go out and socialise and stuff, I enjoy it, but it's quite rare. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't miss out so much on like all the parties, but family stuff is sometimes a bit tough to miss, but For sure. it's what it is. The next question to come back into was, um, <laughs> <laughs> I heard it could have been a different story, um, and it's quite funny as an Italian to like have a bit of a choking wrestling match with some pasta on one of your tours. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? How the hell did you hear about that story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this has actually happened more than once, like, but this time it had happened on, stop on England it. camp. <laughs> but basically, I'd, I think when I was younger, like, I used to just want to chat and, and socialise when I was on camps and stuff, and I would just, like, do everything in a hurry and this meal time I was eating my pasta <laughs> quite quickly and it got stuck in my throat Christ. and we'd just landed in Jordan for the under 17 World Cup Yeah, yeah. and uh, I like fully started choking and I got up and Lois my friend next to me wasn't helping at all so I like got up and tried to get someone's attention and my coach like had to like get it out like it was fully stuck yeah, in, yeah. in my throat but yeah learnt from it it's terrible yeah. <laughs> did, it, did your life flash before your yeah I was like what the hell is going on <laughs> I debated that um, for people that are interested in going to America and pursuing that route mm-hmm. what do you think are the, the main like pros and cons for, for you I think for me like at that time in my career it was the perfect thing to do I mm. think now maybe it's I would question it a little bit more because of how big the game is in England right now um but it was like for me it was perfect I mean you grow up quite quickly you move out to the other side of the world you have to do everything for yourself you've got to get that independence and quite quickly else you're going to struggle yeah, um, yeah. but I, I enjoyed that like it was nice now like you live on your own you fend for yourself and ever since actually I've lived on my own because then I came back for um, to sign for United and I've lived on my own ever since so it's nice like you, you grow up and you, you just have to get on with it and find, figure it out yourself. Um, and obviously the culture was great, the school was great. It's just like a new new way of life to, to enjoy. Was there anything you learned about yourself that you thought, ooh, didn't know that? <laughs> like in a good or bad way? Um, I think I had my first major injury when I was out there. I broke my leg in a game my second year and I kind of, at that, until well, up until that point, everything had been about football like every single day it was like what training am I going to do when was my next game things like that but at that point like when it's taken away from you you kind of like feel like well like you don't know injuries are hard for anyone but at that time I was young and I'd never been out for like more than a day so (laughs) like properly yeah yeah. never had anything and then Bam was out for six months had to get an operation and I think I kind of learned that there is like a lot more to life than football um just enjoyed everything else a little bit more like Mm. made sure like you surround yourself with good people and and just yeah forget about football because when you do it every day it's it's hard to switch off but it's so important and even now i I learn that even more when when it's actually your job yeah 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 yeah. has it has any part of that i mean you've you as, as long as i've known you anyway you've like loved football and lived football yeah but what, now it's become your job. Has is there a part of you that's like, ever you ever wake up and you're like, ah, oh, training today? No, I never wake up and think that about training because I love being on the pitch. But mm. sometimes before I would never switch off from football. I'd always be thinking about football, playing, <laughs> watching it. And now, like, when I train, I'm 100% everything, everything out there. But then when I'm away and I'm home, I try and like take myself out of football and like be Alessia rather than be like a player like yeah, yeah. just do things that that aren't always related to football like enjoy other other things and other parts of your life because now it is m- your job you're so full on with it every day and I think if I don't switch off then I'm not going to be 100% at training and in analysis and things like that so yeah when when I'm in I'm in it full but when I'm away from it I'm switched up. Yeah, I think that's wise. Yeah. For like longevity. Like yeah. You'd rather do that than get sick of it at twenty eight. Yeah, exactly. Play for, yeah. Yeah. Very, very smart. <laughs> Growing <laughs> up a lot now, yeah. Jamie. <laughs> um the other thing I was gonna say, you you touched on it a bit there was about Man United. Mm-hmm. So when in that process at 
UNC. Mm -hmm. Don't get it the wrong way around. No, that's right. Um, at what point did you know you were going to come back and sign for United, or was it at the end, or like halfway through? Were they like, "Nah, we need, we need this." <laughs> You're like, what, "What's the story with that one?" It was actually a bit nuts. So basically, I was supposed to stay at college. You do four years, and you finish in December. And I was in like everything was fine until obviously COVID hit. Yeah. And this is the March and I was staying at college when it just hit and then when it got a little bit more serious mum and dad were like no we get think on. you should come home <laughs> yeah because it was so uncertain no one yeah, knew what yeah, was yeah. going on so I came home the uni shut down like everything was like at a halt so um I came back and I was living at home and I was supposed to go back out as soon as it opened and carry on and play and then finish in that December but then Obviously, it went on for a lot longer than I think we all expected. And I went back out there in July, um, cracked on with pre-season. And then we found out that the college league was going to be like so different. Like we were going to have like maybe half as many games right. and it was going to be like almost like a friendly season. Like there was nothing really to compete for. Um, and it was at that point when I was like, the league was getting bigger over here. Like I'd been in and out of England, so I kind of wanted to push on with that. And I thought like maybe I should come home and, and go pro and play because this, in England, the league was carrying on. But then it was like back and forth, do I stay and just crack on and carry on and, and see where it goes? Because I didn't want to leave because I loved it. Um, yeah. But then it got to a point where my coach sat me down and was like, I think you should go back to England if you want to like carry on breaking into the England squad. So then it was last minute and no club in England knew that I was like, available kind of so Luke and my my brother who's the agent he had to like reach out to clubs and say she was coming home in December but she's actually coming home now and I think within about two weeks I'd signed a contract <laughs> and moved back to England <laughs> so it happened so quickly not bad were there like, any other I don't know if you can disclose it but were there any other clubs interested or was it just like Man United tunnel vision well I'd always like I love Man United I'd, I'd played yeah. so when that was an option like that was the option. That was the only option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, what was it like to, uh, to you know, sign for like your childhood club? Yeah, it was sick. Like it, it was sick. And yeah. I, that might not do it justice, but <laughs> yeah, <it's> sick, mate. <laughs> Buzzing. But because <laughs> it all happened so quickly as well, I didn't even have a chance to like realise what was going on. I'd literally like packed up three years of bags and like moved to England within like two weeks and and started my first pro contract. And I think I was 21 at the time, or yeah, just turned 21. Yeah. Um, and these days, like, kids are signing contracts at, like, 17 or 18. Shit. So, um, yeah, I was like, wow, this is my, like, first professional contract. I was like... OAP, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, like, buzzing just when I came back. Couldn't wait, but I had to do two weeks of quarantine when I came back. Oh, right. Which was long, but, um, yeah. Did you keep... Did you, were you, like, keeping fit during quarantine, like... Yeah, runs I, of Mac, only with six people. No, but I wasn't even allowed to leave the house. Like oh, I had right. to stay in the oh, whole okay. time. Um, but they, it's like, I had a watt bike and weights and stuff, so I was doing that. Um, sure. But I was going insane, like in the house. But yeah, too know. many people in, yeah. in this small area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then obviously, yeah, you've signed and you, you have your debut. Yeah. When you're then like putting on the United shirt for the first time and going out to play, what did that feel like? Because obviously you've been watching like the greats at United for years yeah. and now you're a part of that yeah it's it's great the women's team are really new like the club only started in 2018 which is mad for a club of of that size but um yeah they they started in 2018 and they did really well quite quickly because mm -hmm. I think obviously Manchester United is going to attract some good players and yeah, coaches yeah. and staff and and whatnot so yeah my first game would it was a way to Birmingham I think at the time and I came on at half time and I was just like like buzzing the whole yeah. time. Um, didn't want the game to end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was a great start and, and I've loved it ever since I've been there. And then one up from that, and I don't know if this was your first time playing there, but I was scrolling through Sky, must have been six months ago, seven months ago. And I was like, oh, United women are playing at Old Trafford. I've <laughs> got to watch that. Yeah. And I was like... Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Someone looks familiar over there. What was it like to play for your childhood club and then at like Old Trafford in yeah. front of however many tens of thousands of people? It was amazing. The pitch is unbelievable. I bet, yeah. <laughs> it was such a nice Better day. Like, 
Yeah, better than Cobham. <laughs> the pitch is like a carpet. Um, yeah, the it was a really nice day. I, the girls had played there the year before, but I was injured. Um, so I was gutted to miss out on that one. And then when we found out we were playing it the following season there as well, I was couldn't wait for the game yeah, to come round. Yeah. And then when it did, it was just like so exciting. It was such a nice day as well. The weather was lovely. The fans, like, it was the first time they'd been in Old Trafford because the year before there was no fans because yeah. of COVID. So it was just like a lovely day, like, all round. Perfect storm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then obviously, I think you get a brace, right? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, so I've got this question further down, but <laughs> when did you go from being like a centre mid, tricky centre mid, spraying balls to like an out and out, like <laughs> goal scoring? Bags woman up top, just winning every <laughs> header you've ever seen in your life. Like, I don't know where the was that a conscious from, effort or like. When I was in America, I I went out there as a winger because mm -hmm. when I was younger, I, we used to always put, like I used to play yeah. midfield. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I went to America as a winger, and then the last year they moved me to the nine because we played two up top. Right. And uh, yeah, I just kind of went from there, and then United signed me as a nine. But then I was still so new to the position. Even now, I feel like I'm still like learning the position and everything that comes with it because it's definitely a lot harder than I first thought. Yeah. Um, movements, pressing, things like that. You gotta be like like switched on the whole time. Um, but yeah, probably since I came to United that's when I started as a as an out and out nine. Because the headers you win are just Yeah, like I don't know ridiculous. where they've come from. There was a few in the Euros, <laughs> I think even for it might have been a goal in the semi final, where you just like bully someone off the ball <laughs> and then someone else scores. I was just like when is that? Yeah. <laughs> when did that start? <laughs> I think, I don't know, I, I grew a lot when I hit puberty, so just just came with it. I think when I was in America, my coach used to tell me that I was bad at heading as well. <laughs> so maybe I wanted to prove, prove a point. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, one player as well I've got to talk about, um, because I believe you're at United at the time, mm -hmm. and then you hear the news that Ronaldo is coming back to United. Yeah. What impact does, does that man have on have on United as a club does it does it span across the whole club or is it kind yeah. of silo to the men's team no I think ev everyone in football and the world knows who he is have like you met him no we, like seen him at a distance like we both train we train at Carrington uh, okay. together but um, they're in their own bit and we're over our bit so um, no but yeah when someone like that signs for the same club as you it's like like he was a role model for me ever yeah, since yeah. I can remember um, and he's just a winner isn't he so everything about him is like obviously what he does on the pitch but as a person as well he's like a global superstar so to have that, him at the club and kind of see it a little bit more firsthand go and support him at the games it, it's mm. amazing mm. it must be phenomenal to see someone like that in real life yeah is it like do you get proper starstruck or is it like, i don't it more think i'd get now? starstruck at anyone apart from maybe ronaldo and messi really just because they were like my two idols like obviously when people ask me who my idols are, growing up, Omri was a big idol for me. Play. And um, I loved Zidane, and now I love Haaland, because he's just unbelievable, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. But uh, Messi and Ronaldo are just like, I don't know, they were just put on a pedestal, weren't they, from when we were kids. So I think they're almost like superhumans to, to everyone. So they're probably the only two that I'd be really starstruck at. Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. They're, they're yeah. It's a big yeah, yeah, <laughs> big duo. Um, you, we touched on it earlier, but you've propelled like into quite a lot of fame. Is probably a reasonable word to use for it recently. Um, but when you're seeing yourself like in FIFA on like Panini stickers on billboards <laughs> like Sky, what is that like? Is, is, is there a point where you're like, is that me or like, <laughs> is it is it natural now? No, it still feels weird. Like, and to me, it's I'm just like the same person that like we went to school together. Yeah, like, yeah. just it doesn't feel real. Like, it is. I just see myself as a normal girl, but yeah, it's just the way women's football has gone now. But I mean, it's exciting. That that's what we've wanted for for years and years. And the growth of the game, especially from the summer, has been really, really special. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully it, it continues. Yeah, now. yeah. It's weird for me seeing you, <laughs> <laughs> but not not as if it's like unexpected. Yeah. Like just when you see it, it's like yeah, it is weird. <laughs> the pe people in the office and my flatmates are so bored of it. <laughs> Oh, Celeste went to school there, so. <laughs> we started out our careers together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gone very different ways. Um, speaking of media and stuff, because I've always wanted to ask a footballer this: Do you get media training? Yeah, you do. Like um, at a bit of a younger age, like you're always 
like I guess you get like tips and cues and stuff of what to do and what not to do but also I think like when you're in the game you kind of just know what's right and, and what's wrong so yeah. you kind of just have to roll with it and if there's anything that you don't want to talk about or you don't agree with you just avoid the question yeah. like like people would do in, in, the, in a normal conversation if they don't want to answer yeah, something yeah. you're not answering it um, so yeah I, you do get a little bit but you kind of just like when you grow up with it like through the game you kind of just get used to how to take certain questions yeah yeah because I've in prep for this I've watched like a decent amount of your stuff and in all of it you just come across so well like you speak well you, you like make a joke at the right time you're serious <laughs> at the right time like, I'm glad you think I did, that yeah, my yeah. dad would tell me otherwise nah, nah, I, honestly <laughs> it's like so like when, when I watch you play it's like very professional and then even yeah. the way you speak is so professional and it's like I, I, I didn't know if that was just natural yeah, you. I think, yeah, it's just like how, I don't know, I, I don't, like you don't think too much with it with media, you just have to kind of go off their questions and, yeah, and yeah. roll with it, but um, yeah, I, I used to hate doing media, but now I don't mind well, it Well, when much. it gets as big as this, you <laughs> <laughs> I know, this one I'm enjoying. <laughs> um, you touched on your dad very briefly there, um, and I know family's like huge for you, and yeah. like, I saw that growing up. Um, outside of family, who's been like, the most like influential people in your career as you've progressed through good question um i think i'm fortunate enough to have very good friends like that have helped me through highs and lows of football um in england and in america which was nice um and then in america my two coaches out there um anson who's the head coach and damon damon i still speak to damon all the time he was my assistant coach out there and he was someone that could just like on on the pitch just can make you a better player like that like mm. as as soon as he watches you like take a free kick or something he's like fix this like and next one it goes top bins <laughs> it's just like wow um and as a person he's just someone that's kind of had a big in, impact on me growing up and then obviously younger coaches as, as well when I was at Chelsea's academy and and things like that there was coaches that I still keep in contact with today and then obviously school teachers Mr Anderson yeah yeah because I saw he came to watch you yeah train, he did didn't he? yeah, yeah and Mr Holiday before he passed away but yeah, yeah I, I still try and keep in touch with people who have been there since the start which yeah, is nice. yeah. Mr Anderson was unreal I know, it was he sick, was so it? good, <laughs> so good. Uh, one person as well I know you've obviously got like a fantastic relationship with and one of the funniest like I watch all of you know the um, like when England are in camps they yeah. do like the all, all stupid stuff behind like the scenes food so world yeah, cup yeah. things and all that kind of thing I watch like all of them yeah and one of the funniest people I've seen on there it's is Ella Toon. <laughs> yeah, she's like, in that case. How you've managed to be mates with her, I'm jealous of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is she like and what's your relationship? You know what? We're actually polar opposite people. Really? Yeah. Like, in, a, in everything, like, even in, like, the food we like, we like completely different food, but we just, like, get on like, like a house yeah, on yeah, fire. Yeah. Like, we balance each other off really nicely. Um she's like a bit immature and I'm a little bit more mature I'd like to think <laughs> yeah. but she, we bring out those sides in each other and she, yeah she's hilarious she has me in stitches every day um but yeah I mean <clears throat> she's one of the girls that I grew up playing with um and then when I signed for United I was just buzzing to be back with her and then obviously at England had our journeys together as well which yeah. is nice yeah yeah one thing I've got to um ask you about and I've got a picture of it up ready because Either, I can't remember which way around it was, but one of you did this and then the other one did it, was looking at uh -huh, the, yeah. <laughs> the notes. <laughs> and I was like, uh, that, that just shows like the relationship. You're just on the same wavelength yeah. with everything. So I think she tried to grab the note off the yeah. girl as they were <laughs> passing it to someone. I didn't even see her do that until after. And then she just held it open and I was stood next to her. So I thought I'd just have a bit of a nosy, but everyone kept asking me if I could read German and yeah, stuff yeah. but um, learn anything from that it wasn't even in German I think it was like <laughs> tactical information I can barely remember it because I was so in the moment yeah yeah um, but yeah it was just it like, worked whatever you <laughs> saw like, it worked yeah it was just I don't know when you're on a like a big stage like that I don't know what came over me to even it think was of so looking over funny. it <laughs> it was just the funniest <laughs> it was brilliant um yeah, I wanted to ask you as well about like a day in the life, like on game day yeah. for England. Yeah. What's that like? What, when does it start? Is there like a itinerary? What's the deal? So it's pretty similar like at England and at club. Um, we normally, you obviously wake up, say the game's like, I don't know, five o'clock kickoff. 
we'll wake up have breakfast and then even at, at United as well it's again like a very similar routine you'll go on like a walk or get a coffee or whatever before the game um, and then come back and have like a light lunch and then you kind of just get the afternoon to chill do yeah. what you need to do I like to watch like something on Netflix <coughs> or whatever what's your go to before you know what I just watch a film that I haven't seen before oh again. really yeah and just like put a film on probably have a little nap and just like yeah, relax nice. and switch off and then we have pre-match and that's like kind of when you start to get in the zone a little bit you get your your tracksuit on for the game and, and pack your bag and whatever and then head to the stadium who's on tunes um at club or at england both <laughs> At club, it's either me or Zell, really? our captain. Yeah. What's the playlist saying? <laughs> Back yourself a <laughs> bit there. <laughs> to be honest, we play a mix on Mixcloud mm. and just like it's it has what. Yeah. Sat on the fence. <laughs> yeah. It, people pleaser. Yeah, um, yeah. And then at England, it's Leah, the captain. She has a real variety. It could be like old old school tunes or yeah. sing alongs or a bit of R and B, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that before you step on the pitch or before the whistle's blown you jump seven times yeah <laughs> I don't know I can't tell you where that came from <laughs> I think it started in America and then like you know like, seven though? I don't know it's like my lucky number maybe that's okay, why fair. but I just jump yeah it get. you know when you're like trying to keep warm before the whistle goes I just do it seven times any other superstitions I always listen to the same playlist before a game and this is what you force everyone else to listen yeah. to as well <laughs> they listen it, to it with me yeah um and I mean it's it, I add songs to it all the time but it's always just the game day playlist and mm. then I put my right sock on first before my left but classic you have to no, that's not a super weird one um, yeah I used to be really superstitious before I tore my hammy like before that I used to have like a routine that I would stick to like a hundred percent but then after that I thought like if you're going to have a bad game, if God forbid you're going to get injured, like it's going to happen. You just got to like do things. Because yeah. if one thing was to throw me off my routine, it would like stress me out a little bit. So now I'm just very like go into it. Like as long as I'm ready for the game, that's all that matters. Yeah, so. yeah. That's an interesting take. I thought you were going to go down the direction of like the superstitions didn't work because you pulled your hammy or something. Yeah, well, that's like kind of it. Like I, I used to do so so many things before a game, and then I thought like what am I doing because it would just throw me off if yeah. something wasn't right so now I just like go into it as uh, as it is yeah yeah touched on it earlier with um like your desire throughout like since I've known you mm -hmm. of just like always going the extra mile you know going for sprints I remember you used to go for sprints with like your family yeah going kick a ball with your dad do whatever it was but always doing extra where does that desire come from or is it purely just like love of the game or what is that I think not many people have it it's yeah. mental <laughs> I think love of the game first and foremost because like that's I wouldn't do it if I didn't didn't love or think that maybe I could make it one day yeah. but I think maybe my mum and dad like they've worked hard a lot through their lives and I don't know maybe I just think that it was just like stemmed into me as a young age and maybe being a girl like thinking that you have to do things a little bit harder which it isn't true because I'm sure young boys that want to make it do exactly the same work as girls do growing up um, but yeah I just thought if you want to make it you've got to do everything possible yeah. when you're young to to put yourself in the best chance of doing it so yeah don't, no, don't it's know. quite natural then yeah, yeah, yeah don't really know where it, yeah I think if it was too forced anyway you'd get bored of it yeah you'd, you'd grow out of yeah. like love of the game but yeah. um yeah all right, I've got two videos for you. Okay. You'll know you you'll be familiar with them. They're goals <laughs> that you've either scored or been a part oh, of. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> the first one is this one. <laughs> you already know what it is. I need to ask you one key question. Okay. And it comes in a minute. What? What? How I missed the sitter? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? Here. What is happening? I know. <laughs> Stick it in a corner. But then, why? Why that? <sighs> well. Firstly, just put it in a corner and yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have to do it. the hard like, work. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, but the keeper made a save and then I just thought like I had to react to it quickly and I don't know, I don't know where it came from. Never done a back heel before. Not a skill 
player, I'm normally just like a knock it and run or knock it and shoot. You, like, oh, no, nah, you No, nah, Jamie, I don't have well many there. skills what anymore. What about the goal? It was either, in, it might have been this game. No, against Northern Ireland where you took it on a half turn and wrapped it bottom bin. Yeah, but like, not I'm not like a... Not a <laughs> <laughs> But like, I'm not like a tricky player, maybe like sure. step overs, like all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't know where it came from. Probably won't score one like it again. Um, but I mean, I'll take it that you it was in a have, semi. Yeah. I mean, it got the boots in the tower. Like yeah, it, so it did. You can't complain. The next one is this. And I don't think, I know a few people have asked you about this, but I don't think anyone's asked you about this one. It's not that bad, but... So it's here. Oh. <laughs> How long were you going to stay down for <laughs> if, if that ball did go in the back of the net? <laughs> so I, she actually killed my foot like she stamped on it so it like you know when you're gonna get a bruise yeah yeah so I was like on the floor like in a little bit of pain didn't see the goal go in didn't know how it had gone in but I heard the stadium like a rut and I thought what the hell has just gone on <laughs> and I just got up I don't know where I was running to who I was running to because I didn't know who'd put it in the back of the net yeah, yeah. and I just got up and went with it and was just like adrenaline took over my foot was the best it's ever felt when the stadium erupts I couldn't feel a thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, yeah because it wasn't like straight away given either there's a bit of hesitation yeah, so you must have been getting up yeah <laughs> what was go- yeah I, I did think that I was like what is going on and then when you just hear the stadium like go off as it did it was like incredible yeah incredible was this the highlight of your career winning the Euros yeah absolutely I think yeah it's that and the World Cup are like the pinnacles um, and we've got a World Cup next summer so big one big what one yeah Can you win it? <laughs> I don't know we'll see we've got we've made a good start but um, yeah World Cup's like the best of the best isn't it yeah, but yeah, yeah. this tournament was just everything about it was just unbelievable yeah yeah I think you'll be fine you'll yeah be fine. <laughs> the last picture I wanted well this is a picture now but Kay. I want to get your reaction to this because um, <laughs> In the build up to this, yeah. I was like, Dad, you you got to find something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> so here we all are. Look at the state of Aaron. <laughs> he had a skinhead for a while. <laughs> Ages. I think he's only just grown out of it. I know. I showed my flatmate, and they were like, Sorry, where's the girl in that picture? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hair so oh, that is so cool. Great picture, isn't it? Yeah. That was one of the. Well, one of all the tournaments yeah. that we won. <laughs> we had a good track record, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible, but I had, to, I had to show you that. Yeah, that was such good times. Yeah. We used to play, like, on those tournaments, you used to play, like, about 12 games a day, Oh, it was you? ridiculous. I'd Absolutely come home and be ridiculous. shattered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be full of, like, cocktail sausages. <laughs> yeah, and, just and ice cream, yeah, like, flakes. Ice creams, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Um, my dad will tell you himself that he remembers, I don't know if you even will remember this goal, um... It was in one of the tournaments, maybe like a Kings Hill tournament or the yeah. Larkfield tournament yeah. or whatever it was. Um, I think it was, I passed it to you, you set it back to Aaron, Aaron down the line to Morgan, Morgan cut it back to you, <laughs> you scored, and the other manager saw like, <laughs> <laughs> A proper <laughs> yeah. West Farley yeah, like yeah. DNA. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that, exactly that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I had to show you that. Um, but the last question is uh, the question that I ask everyone, but I'm going to have to split it for you. Yeah. is one thing to achieve in your footballing career mm-hmm. and then one thing to achieve outside of football? Um, I think in football, like, now I've had a taste for winning a major tournament. It just, like, lights the fire for even more. So, mm. World Cups, Champions League, leagues, like... And I know it's a lot easier said than done, but um, that is definitely the goal one day, just to go on and win as much, like trophies as a team as possible yeah. um, whether that's club or, or country I think that's just like what it's all about and there's nothing better than winning a, a trophy with a team like knowing all the hard work that's gone into it like throughout the, the tournament or, or the year in, in the league and stuff so that's definitely it in football what about in you've missed life. one out though Ballon d'Or Ballon d'Or I mean if that comes with it that'll be nice <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe one Fingers day. But crossed. Yeah. Um, in life, I think just. I know it sounds so cliche, but just like be happy. Like, it, obviously, I love football to death, but just having like stable relationships, family, everything like that outside of football is like so important to me. And like yeah. a, a reason why I, I can play well on the weekends is because I've got so much support behind sure. me. And 
everything is for them. Like they sacrifice a lot growing up for me. Um, and my brothers too, like, and my mum and everyone just like threw themselves into it and not knowing maybe that it would work out or not. And yeah, yeah I'd love to just hopefully go on to, to do more stuff and give everything back to all of them. Lovely. <laughs> well, we'll leave it there. It's a great place to end. Nice. Um, but thank you very much for coming on. Really, really appreciate it. No worries. Um, I mean, I'll put your social media links below, but it's <laughs> 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 sort of fighting a tornado <laughs> doing that. But I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you very much. That's no all. worries.